guy should be. Should be almost played out. He's had about four or five great runs. A really good run. And he's not a big fish. I mean, he's a nice size. Nice size fish. Nice and healthy. Nice and fat. But just some great runs. Look at how fat that fish is. Wow. He is a, he's a beauty. Just shows you the fish in here in whitetail are not that big. Or right now, the ones we're catching. A little barbel suck. I'll just gotta get right in the tough part of his jaw. There he is. He's not a big fish by any means, but look at how nice. Look at the colors. They're just beautiful silver. It's about oh, it's about 18 inches long. But look at how thick they are. They're very thick fish. And there he goes. Beautiful little fish. Wow, again on that uh, that long black chronomid, little beadhead chronomid we tie, a little glass bead on it, a little tail tuft. Really effective fly if you fish it just the right way. Again, I can't stress enough the point of that little weight. See that little weight on the fly line? About a foot and a half up from my fly, gets that fly down real quick to the depth I want it, and it just works great. Oh, he's there you go. Down pretty good. See, they just are so powerful. It's unreal. They just kick and away they go, wherever they want to go. Have you seen him yet? Ah, no, but I'm coming to have a look. <laughs> I had to. I couldn't help it. I heard all the sloshing on top of the water. Well, yeah, I saw the run. He took the good run. That was the second run. Awesome. And you know, as I was kicking over here, there's fish cruising all through the marsh. To think we spent. Quite a bit of time down at the other end of the lake. Ah, quite a bit of time. It was good. I mean, chronomitting was successful down yeah, there. Yeah, it was all right. But, you know, the smaller fish. Oh, that's a beauty. <laughs> that's not bad. Not, not bad. Not bad at all. Great. That's a peach. Oh, lovely fish. But, you know, about Whitetail Lake, I mean, that is, I mean, that's a, that's a quality fish. That's what makes us a trophy fishery. But, there's bigger fish than that. There's well, a lot the of bigger yesterday, fish. Well, with the guy yesterday, 33-incher, figure that was 15 plus. Like 15. that. That's a trophy fish. Yeah. And Maybe that's why that. people will come and they'll spend a week here fishing and, and go six days without catching a fish just to catch the one big, big guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready yet? Oh, aren't they beautiful fish? Oh. <laughs> oh, he doesn't even get in the net. What kind of net is this? <laughs> It's a little shorty net. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. He's going to slosh and he's gone. What we're going to do without net. <clears throat> right on the bottom lip. Oh, look at the size of it. <laughs> I'm up here. Look at that. Another white guy. That was the white guys we tied up last night. The white marabou yeah, model. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a trophy. Is that pig quality? Going. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh. I need Big to get back in here. You know what they look like? They look like coho salmon. Yeah, they sure do. Well, these are Gerards, right? Yeah, Gerard Rainbow. Gerard Rainbow. Yeah, that? they just—they're known for being uh, voracious eaters, and <laughs> they just grow huge. And I mean, there's some big uh, dragonflies in here. We got some samples. Oh yeah, the that you've collected the yeah. garner and the and the gonfish. Well, first flies. first fish I caught was on a, a dragon. Exactly. So it's just wow. Look at that, and there he goes. The sub. He's got a sound before it goes down. Big. Holy cow. Excellent. That was a lot of fun. That's not bad. So we've had a little chronomid action. We've got the, the marabou going now again. Yeah. I don't know what to try, but it's pretty calm. I don't know. But that's the thing. If you come here, you got to be ready to try everything. And I guess that's what we've shown, if nothing else, is that there are a lot of different ways you can catch fish here. Yeah. You just got to be persistent and keep trying them and, and keep change with mind. the conditions. Yeah, just keep trying different things. If something falls out of your box, put it on. Yeah. You know, you never know. I mean, the one thing fell out of my box I tried, it was really bad, but, you know, <laughs> it could be good. You don't know. Well, I'm going to kick over here and see if Ooh. I can find some in the in the morrow. I'm going to have a sandwich and just enjoy <laughs> the moment for a, a couple of minutes so here. Oh, to do it. See. Excellent fish. Beauty. Beauty. Hi, and welcome to the bench. Today I got a great little pattern. It's the white marabou muddler. 
What makes this pattern so special is that white marabou. At the end of the fly, it pulses in the water and really gives it that lifelike appearance. Also, the spun deer hair helps by displacing a lot of water and really attracting the fish. Make sure you have this list of ingredients ready before you tie the fly. We're going to tie the white marabou muddler on a Tiemco 200R size 6 hook. We're using some 6 aught brown thread. We have some red soft hackle for the tail. We're going to use some metallic chenille for the body. We have some white marabou for the wing, along with some peacock curl strands for the wing, and some winter mule deer for the spun deer hair head. We're going to start the fly off by taking about 20 barbs of our red soft tackle, extend it back to the hook shank, and put it back past the hook shank about a half an inch and tie it in. We have a strand of metallic chenille. We're going to tie in for the body. And I like to start tying it in at the very back, right where I put in the tail. Tie right back to the tail, and then we'll wrap forward to form the body. For the wing, I'm taking about two inches of the white marabou. I've cut off quite a bit, bulk it up quite heavy because this marabou, when it gets in the water, it does get quite thin. So take a nice clump of marabou, extend it back about two inches on your fly, and tie it in. And that'll be the wing. I've now taken four strands of peacock curl. We're going to place them on the hook right on top of the wing to form the back of the fly. And I put the peacock curl right back to the end of the white marabou we put on. Measure it up so it's about the same length as your white marabou and tie it in. The head is formed by taking some deer hair and stacking it. I know no one likes to do spun deer hair but this, this fly requires it. Get it all stacked up nice, just like that. And if you have the right tools it sure makes the job a lot easier. We want also the tips to be nice and even. That's why I've used this tool to keep the tips nice and even because at the very head of this fly we want a collar of deer hair. The collar to stick out and then we'll finish off with the spun deer hair head. So we'll take this all nice even material now, spread it around the fly head and just tighten up just so it forms a nice, a nice collar on the fly at the top and then we'll spin the rest of the deer hair up to form the head. Now that we've finished the head and whip finished the fly off, we're going to take the fly out of the vise and start trimming the deer hair to form the head. Really nice to have a really good pair of scissors to cut this with. I've taken some nice long Dr. Slicks and we're just going to start trimming this deer hair back to form the head. Well there it is, the finished white marabou muddler. You know this fly is just an excellent minnow imitation. It can be used in lakes and rivers and fish it wherever there's bait fish present.